Hi, today we're going to talk about formatting your paper um, in MLA format using MS Word. So um, the first thing we're going to do is of course open a new, get a new document and all we've got to do is click on blank document. You can search for, an, there is an MLA format, an MLA essay format. You can use the templates, make sure they're right. Not all of the things are right as I've mentioned somewhere else um, in my videos the template for the cover letter, the business letter, is wrong. It has some things in bold that do not need to be in there. So you need to know what it looks like, and I think it's just as easy to build it yourself. So blank document, and we're going to start by, first of all, let's take a look at what goes in it. This is Ruben's sample, just like Papi Huero from our SA1 samples. And you'll notice his last name is up here at the top, and then he's got the page number, and that's his header and it recurs on every page, page number changing. So that's all we need there, and then we'll have a heading, title, and then the essay. So it's really simple and straightforward format. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the header. So I double click, but you can also, um, at the top of the page, you can also click on insert, and then select header, and we just want a blank one. Make sure, of course, you get rid of type here. I can't tell you how many papers I've had that had type here up there. Click on Home. We want to move this over to the right. And here, you're going to type your last name. Put a space. Always put a space. I usually put two between name and number. And then we want to click on Insert. And we are going to insert the page number at the current position and the plain one. Nothing fancy. Fancy stuff in college writing is your words. Now, you want to make sure you have a 12-point font. APA does require that you use Times New Roman. So if you are setting up your paper for college usage, I would go ahead and click on font. And first of all, um, make sure it's on 12, whichever font you choose. But um, if you're going to be doing a lot of different papers for whether it's MLA, Chicago, APA, APA is the only one at this point that requires or so highly suggests a specific font, font, which is Times New Roman. And to make it easier on myself, I would simply um, click on the paragraph call out and then click on set as default. And it gives you the options for this document only or all documents based on the normal template. If you choose that and say OK, whenever you open a blank document, um, then it will be in whatever font and size you've selected. And that way it's one less thing to worry about. I leave mine like this so I can show students every year. Um, but so I'm going to go ahead and put this in Times New Roman just because that way when I move into APA, I don't even have to worry. So that's all we need for our um, header. You notice here it's changed to. Here we've got page three. Remember that if you um, if you just type in the number one, then what's going to happen is you're going to end up with one on every page. So make sure you insert the page number. Um, then the next thing we need to do are a couple of things. Of course, here I didn't change my default, so I'm going to press Control A just to get every single space that's in this document and change it to Times New Roman 12. If you'd already done the default and said do it for all normal documents, then that would be the font it was in. Either way, whatever font you use, and even if you're not doing APA and using Times New Roman, it needs to be a standard 12-point font. You want to make sure that your header and your heading, your paper, everything is in the same font. So we've changed our font. The next thing we need to do is go to the paragraph call out. I clicked on paragraph because there are a few things here we need to take care of. Now the spacing before and after, mine is set to zero because I already fixed it. Probably, generally, words default is auto. And check this out. Look what happens. See, there's extra space in there. Watch that box whenever I change it to zero. You notice it gets rid of those extra spaces. And of course, I'm going to select don't add space, extra space between paragraphs of the same style. And I want this in double space. Now, one of the things you should never do is don't set your spacing to 2.1, 2.3. Um, don't put those spaces before and after, because those are things that basically tell your reader you're so dumb you won't figure this out. And that's the last thing we want to do is tell our reader they can't figure out um, that they're really dummies. I mean, 
our format again is that first impression and if you're typing this for college your teachers have written papers they know the tricks um, your teachers have read papers I can just look at a paper literally from five feet away and tell you you know that's more than two um, double spacing I can tell you you know that's an inch and a quarter um, it's my superpower so um, don't do that again if you're just writing for school check that set as default and accept it and that way you never have to think about these things again so all right I'm gonna click OK so now we have everything good to go um, at the top here you're gonna type in let's go ahead and take a look at Rubens again you're gonna have name your professor the course and the date so your name your name professor Wood, whatever your professor's name is English 1301 we're in 1301 or 1302 whatever course you're taking um, and the date and make sure and put I always put my birthday one eight um, make sure and type out the word for the month whether you put it first or you put it second if you do 19 July 2008 um, if somebody's very picky they'll show you exactly how they want it done but make sure you type that out don't use the slashes or dashes 719 2018 um, it's words college formal then we're going to enter just once no extra space in between we're going to center um, put in our spiffy title and we will have title case so major words capitalized we're going to enter only once left do not pull a line left align we're going to tab and then of course we're going to write our paper um, so let me get some words in here you didn't know those were words look at this fabulous essay so you write your essay um, if you are working on something that requires you to um, have citations and sources one of the things that and I'm just going to give us a little text here to play with um, one of the things I do right after I do my title is I put control enter and that gives me a new page remember wherever your paper ends if you're using sources in MLA this paper is called works cited of course it would only be work if we just had one um, the works cited begins on a new page but it is part of your paper so it should be part of the same document enter and go left over here so again no extra spaces here or there um, MLA is of course a um, author location citation style so if for example um, this was let's just go with this one um, oh, let's make this an M if this was our author and we had um, quoted and perhaps we had a page number it was on page 87 period after that citation when it's in text whenever you use a source if you're using something that requires you to cite sources um, a more formal paper then once you if you've created this page oops lost it there we go oh, no extra spaces if we created this work cited page then I'm just gonna borrow this so we can pretend if we created this works cited page whenever you go through and you use the source you can just go down here and do your citation and that way it's in there then you go back up to your paper work on it some more put in your citation like as with templates you can use citation generators um, word does have a references um, option that you can use but again you want to make sure that you know how it looks so you can use those things but make sure that they're not always correct and in the end it's your grade and no teachers gonna give you points because word messed it up or Google did or, or whatever did so make sure you're using a reliable source if you're using a generator to look at a lot of times it's just as easy to type it up from the instructions one of the things with our citations for example let's say we would put another one in and this one was a W because we're gonna organize them based on the first thing that appears in the citation is these citations need to be in a hanging indent and on the home tab back at the paragraph call out there is in this same call out where we had our spacing there's a section on indentation and so under special I'm gonna click on hanging and then I'm gonna go down here and say okay and you can see what it did was it scooted it over so it is a hanging indent no bullets no numbers just that hanging indent and all in alphabetical order 
if we went on in our paper and we used another source, and let's say this source was an organization whose um, name started with 01, then we would have numbers first, then our letters. Um, that's the order we put them in. Of course, if you're writing a personal paper, you're not going to have this works cited page if you're not using sources or required to do anything more than attribute according to. So let's look at Rubens. Let's see if we got it. He has got his header, his heading, his name, I mean the title. These things are just solely on the first page. Then on his second page and following, he just has that header. And of course, there is his essay. Does ours look like that? Why, yes it does. We've got a header, we've got our heading, our title, our essay, and if we have a work cited, so if you're doing a formal paper, if you're using sources, we'd have that. If not, we're not going to have that. Simply have our essay as it is. So those are the basics of um, doing the MLA format. I hope that helps you, and take care.